Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. I am so excited to finally do a basic tutorial on mini educators. E-Tower Technologies puts out a very big line of remote collar trainers. We train with them every day. We do low level remote collar training. This video is for a couple of people. A lot of my clients that are do a board and train, I want them to become familiar with a collar before their dog comes back. A lot of my clients that are here for one-on-one -on -one training, I want them to understand the collar before they show up. And for folks that buy these, whether they buy them from me or from someone else, through the mail, online, I want them to understand how the collar works as far as turning it on and setting it. This is not gonna be a how-to, how to use it. I've got other videos for that and I'll be making a lot more. This is how to take the collar out of the box and work with it. It can be scary for some people, so we're gonna work with it. So, we're gonna be demoing on the Mini Educator E-Collar Technologies. This is the 300 TS. Let's talk about what's inside the box. Owner's manual, read it. It's there for a reason. You're the owner, read the owner's manual, okay? You get a power cord. Okay. The power cord runs on a standard outlet and overseas, you could actually get an adapter for it. It has a splitter. I'll explain why the splitter is there for a reason. Okay. It comes with a lanyard. The lanyard is used to clip onto the collar. You can hang it around your neck. You get a plastic bag that has four pieces in it. You get a set of longer contact points. You get a tool that will take the contact points off your collar and put them back on, and you get a test light. Okay, and those all come in your little plastic bag. You get your remote, and you get your receiver. To turn on your receiver, there is a red dot right there. Your handset has a red dot right there. You are gonna connect this red dot to that red dot. Notice how there's no blinking light. That means it's off. Red dot to red dot, I hold it up to it. I get a blinking light. If it's blinking green, that means it's on and charged. If it's blinking red, that means it needs to be charged. That's how this turns on. To turn it off, I do the same thing. Red dot to red dot. It goes to solid red and then it goes to blank. A helpful hint, sometimes at night when you turn it off, make sure you actually look at it so it actually is not blinking. A few times I could have sworn I turned it off, I wake up in the morning and it's still blinking. Same thing with turning it on. When I turn it on, make sure it's actually blinking green before you put it on your dog. To turn it off, make sure it actually is not blinking at all. Okay. To turn on my handset, there's a bunch of buttons on the back. Okay. This button right there is my on, off, and my light. I will explain what the light button does later. This button is my MC button, my momentary and continuous button. I'll explain what that does later. And this right here is how I charge my unit. So we've got the input for the charging, my on off light, my momentary continuous. Okay. On the side of my button, there is a button, a black button with the letter T, which is for vibrate. There is two buttons, a black button and a red button. This is for, well, the way we set this up is, this is gonna be for momentary, this is gonna be for continuous, okay? I like to set them up a little bit differently though. I'm gonna set this one up as continuous and boost. I like to set them up as continuous and boost, but I will show you every way how to set them up. This button on the top, is my intensity dial, and I'll show you right now how to do that. 
I'm going to hold in the on off button until I see a blue light and then I'm letting go of the button. I have turned on the unit now. My dial on the top will allow me to go up from zero to 100. Okay. Let me explain now what the light button does. Okay. When the unit is on with both the handset and the collar on, if I touch the on off light button very quick, I get a flashing light. If I touch the button again, the on off light button, very quick, I get a continuous light. If I touch it very quick again, I goes back to standard mode. Do we see the 1D? 1D means this is in one dog mode and this is a single dog unit. And do we see now, we see the M and the C. When you see the M and the C, that means this unit is set up to do momentary and continuous. Momentary and continuous. Okay. If I hit the button one, now, in order for me to change the way that these two buttons work, if I hit the M and C button on the back one time, it goes to M only. See that? What that means is this is momentary and this is momentary boost. Black is momentary, red is momentary boost. I will show you how to set up the boost button. The default is 20. Meaning, if I'm at four and I hit the red button, it goes to 24. Whatever the setting is now, the red button is 20 more than the setting. So M is momentary and boost momentary. What is boost? What is momentary? It's a tenth of a second. No matter how long I hold this down for, it only gives a tenth of a second stimulation. Okay. Hit the red button. Hit the to get it out of momentary only. I'm hitting the button again, and I get C, and M disappears. This is actually the way I prefer to use the collar. That means that this is continuous. And this is continuous boost. This is continuous, and this is continuous boost. I train with low level pressure on, pressure off theory. The way you train is up to you. Okay. Now, how do you get a boost button by having it in M and C? I will explain. If I push the button again, it goes back to M and C. So, how do I make it boost with just M and C? This is how. Let's remember when this is on M and C, this is momentary, this is continuous. What happens when I want to boost? What happens when I want to go up 10 or 20 in a split second? If I hold down the top button, what does that give me in this mode? Momentary. If I hold down the top button and then immediately hold down the bottom button, it gives me a momentary boost. Watch this happen. I'm gonna, I'm, I don't hold, normally hold the remote like this, but let's watch. Momentary, boost. Did it go up to 24? Okay. Momentary, boost. So I'm holding both buttons down at a time. How about if I want continuous boost? Watch. I'm going to be hitting the red button first and then the momentary button. So red button is continuous in the MC mode. Red button, momentary. Red button, momentary. If we, most dogs that we work at are working at below 10. So what do we want? I only want, say, 5. How do I make my boost button 5, 10, 15, 20, 25? Let me show you how. Go into momentary mode. By going into momentary mode, right there. 
Okay? Go down to zero. So I'm in momentary mode in zero. Hold on to your black button with an S. Hold it down until you get a blinking, until it blinks. It's blinking. Use your dial to set the, mo the level you want. So now it's at five. Hit your momentary button again for five seconds. Okay. Now, here's a good example. Say we're at C, which is continuous. If I hit boost, it should go up to 10. Five, boost button, 10. Five, boost button, 10. The T is vibrate, tone, but this is a vibrating collar. Okay. Don't be, don't be disillusioned by vib vibrate mode. Some dogs are highly averse to it. What I also don't like about vibrate mode is I can't control the intensity of it. If I've got this on five or 100, vibrate is vibrate. But a lot of people use it. They use it as an interrupter, they use it as an intention getter, or they use it as a pre-correction. However you use it, do what works for you. Let's say we've got a dog that's got longer fur and we want to, and these, these contact points are not quite working. Take your tool, put it over the contact points. Hand tighten, and then just give a little bit of a half turn, maybe even a quarter turn, to secure them. Let's talk about the comfort pads. There's a comfort pad that we can use. Some dogs get a little bit irritated by these two, pro these two points. Um, also, some dogs have to wear these for longer than usual. Maybe they're, um, you're working your dog, you're out in the field with your dog. Uh, you're, you're just doing extra training with your dog. Some dogs also have skin irritation to the pads. So we've got this wonderful comfort pad that we can use. I've removed my contact points. I'm putting on my pad so it does not block my charger. I'm putting on my nuts. I'm putting on my nuts, okay. and notice how the nuts sit below the contact pads. Let's talk about charging the unit. Okay. I've got my standard charger with a splitter. Okay. I open up the, the rubber case. Make sure you put the charger in the right way. There's a little groove on the charger. You want to make sure you put it in nice and snug. The first time you do it, it's a little bit tight. On the back of my hand unit, we have the same thing. Put it in. Snug. Plug this into an outlet. Your e-collar technology collars come with a test light. Sometimes you're not, you don't know if your collar is working or if you're getting a good continuous uh, uh, charge out of no, it's not a charge. Good. Stimulation. Yep. You're not sure if you're getting a good continuous stimulation. So what we do is the test light fits on your contact points. You can hold it down with your thumb and finger and can you see that? The little light? Yeah. Okay. So I'm at five but watch what happens as I increase. So as I increase the charge it gets brighter and brighter.
So then you know your collar is actually working. Some folks, sometimes folks don't think their collar is working. If you use the test light and we know it's working, it's usually a fit issue. Since I specialize in low-level remote collar training, we're often finding that a lot of dogs are actually working below level five. Sometimes we have dogs that are working at level two. So what e-collar technologies has come out with is they've come out with a reducer. So you're getting about 50% of the uh, uh, intensity, which is really nice on some of your lower level dogs. So keep in mind that the reducer or the comfort pad does not come standard. It's an additional purchase um, from ourselves or e collar Technologies. So the reducer has, this is your reducer, and this is a little star washer. To install them properly, You're going to take off your contact points. Put the reducer on, and then you want to put on your star washer. Tighten them snug. Then you'll find that you're working at about, you have a little bit more freedom to work at uh, levels now above, above four, three, four, and five. Just remember, when you're working long days with your remote collar, um, it's important that every four hours you actually switch sides. Remote collars will never burn a dog or a human, but you can get pressure sores. So anything you leave, on you for long periods of time, creating pressure can also create a reaction from your body. So if you find that you're doing a lot of backpacking, hiking, long training sessions, halfway through after three or four hours, just take the collar, switch it to that side. Three or four hours later, take the collar, switch it to that side. You'll find that the dog doesn't get any irritation then. I do a lot of off-leash out in the woods, by the ocean, by the lake. Uh, swimming pool training as well. What I like people to do is after your dog has been in a swimming pool or a lake or the ocean, rinse off the collar with some tap water. Always make sure that the charging port is closed though. Another thing I like to do is once I have the collar on a dog, I always like to leave maybe three or four inches, but I like to cut off all the remaining collar. I find that the collar that's hanging irritates the dog. I have other videos online that show how to size the collar for the dog, the placement of the, the collar for the dog, and um, how snug the collar should be. I wanted to make sure I just did a sort of like a tour of the collar coming out of the box and being presented to you when you first buy the collar so you can become more familiar with it. I'm so excited that you watched this video. I'm so excited that you're excited about low-level remote collar training. I love making training videos for you guys. Jeff Gelman, Solid Canine Training, madly in love with you. I cannot wait to talk to you soon.